Join just released this brand new double din 8 inch radio. Now if you saw my other video, I had a 10 inch radio in here. The 10 inch kind of covered everything up, covered up my HVAC controls and I didn't think it'd be a problem doing my HVAC but it was kind of a pain in the butt. So this 8 inch came out and I just had to buy it. Now it runs 4.4.4 and there's a lot of really big differences that exist only on the 8 inch radios right now. But to start off the mounting 1999 Pontiac Trans Am. The only issue I had was I had to cut my bezel to get it to fit. The dash I didn't touch. It, it's a direct install. I had to literally cut out the center bar and then trim the sides. But since my bezel here is curved, it gets thin as it goes up, it kind of sticks out on the side. So I actually custom made another bezel. This is just my temporary one. Okay, you could see the side-by-side -side comparison. This is the one I had in the car, and this is my new one. So I had to build up the side with Lexan, and then I pretty much used some body filler, a lot of sanding, a lot of painting, and it's a really nice gloss black finish, which matches the rest of my interior parts. A lot taller, so it won't look like the radio sticks out. Okay, here is my new bezel intact. No more high spot on the radio screen right there. It's nice and flush all the way up. And the black gloss matches my other black gloss interior pieces that I have all over. So, what makes this radio so much different? And it runs 4.4. Why didn't they put 5.1? Well, I don't know why they didn't do 5.1, but I have noticed that 5.1 is a bit slower than the 4.4s. So, the huge difference on this guy, which is really big change, is the fact that this radio never shuts off. It always goes into a sleep mode. Now, there's an option you could turn that off, but... Unlike other Android radios that you shut it off and you have the cold boot of about 30 seconds, this is on instantly every time. You turn my key on, now my car has been off for two days. And it's on. There is no boot up time on this thing. It launches power amp right away and you're ready to rock and roll within just a few seconds. Now the old Joying radios had a shutdown timer where you can go up to two hours and if you came back within two hours, it would do the same thing. This one is all the time. It never shuts off. Now, the, the power draw is only about five milliamps. I haven't pulled this out to confirm it yet from joining, but to break it down on an average new car, they usually pull 50 to 100 milliamps when the car is actually off anyway with just your piece, your you know remote control relay antennas and everything running. But five milliamps is nothing. I mean, you can run off five milliamps off a car battery for like a year and still be able to start your car. So, not a problem, but you can turn it off. Now, if you have dormancy mode turned on where the radio never shuts down, there is a way you can manually reboot it. Now, none of the other radios I've ever seen have this option. You pull down the toolbar, and you actually have a reboot button, and you actually have a shutdown button. So if you do want to shut it down, if you're not going to be using your car for a couple days, heck, you can shut it down now. Now, the actual dimmer does work when you turn your headlights on. The screen dims, the buttons actually turn on. And now what's kind of cool about this one that's, again, new, that you could not do before, if you go into display, your brightness, you can set your brightness when the headlights are off, and you can set your brightness for nighttime when you turn them on. So they Joying is really going through and really polishing up this radio to make this thing a real contender. I mean, I thought these things were cool before, but with all these additional inputs and settings they have on here it has a really nice finished feel to it I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with this new operating system okay so this is the stock join launcher and right away if you've had other join radios you can see it's a little different you got your time on the top here some icons over here I mean it's nothing crazy now for some reason I installed Nova launcher and next launcher and you can install them but they're not your default launcher no matter what you do. So whenever you press the home key, it's going to take you back to the stock joining launcher, which is fine. I mean, the keys are big. It's really responsive. I have no problem using the joining launcher. I kind of I actually kind of like it for a car radio because you want to have the big buttons. The resolution on this is a much higher resolution than what I've seen on the other radios. And you can really see that when you launch Pandora. Because normally when you launch Pandora on a different Android radio or your phone, you have large Elmar on the one side. And then you have skip track and everything in the album that's playing. You launch Pandora now on this, 
this is like the tablet version. So you have the last different songs that have played. These are kind of small down here. Your play, your skip. You got the artist info and everything on here. And you have all your stations on the left. So it's kind of cool. It's an 8-inch. It's pretty easy to use. As long as you have good eyes, you can actually see it. But this is definitely not the cell phone version. This is like more a tablet version. My Samsung Galaxy tablet has looks exactly the same like this. I don't know how it determines that when you download it. It has to be a resolution thing. Because the same thing when I put... A different launcher like next launcher on here the icons are really really small so i mean you can fit a lot more icons on the screen but they're so small it doesn't really work good as a car radio this i think the stock launcher works pretty good now what's different about this another thing they added too to the music player i never liked the stock music players before on these because you can only sort by album name only well at least now they added you can go by artist by the CD, or you can just do a folder search, and then you have your different sources right here. Sound quality in this thing is really, really good. They made some really good changes to their amplifiers or the way the EQ on this thing works. Let me go into the EQ here. Kind of made it a little cooler looking. They got the different types of, uh, with the little photo there, depending on what you do, the little picture changes. Just the low, high, and mid-range EQ. Nothing fancy, but... They do have a more advanced EQ. This is your different balance and fader settings. You go under the music equalizer. Now you have a 10 band EQ and you can actually adjust the different bands any way you want to. And now there's a bunch of other things on here. I really don't have any idea what a lot of this stuff is. You scroll down, you have a loudness. You actually have an extra loudness setting and you have three different levels of that. You can optimize the speakers I have turned on. Reverberation, I really don't know what that means. The uh, fire equalizer, which is this, is enabled so I can adjust the different bands and so on. And force enable V4A, don't know what that is. Going back, let's go into our settings. Settings menu is a little different than the other ones. It's very simplified. There's really not much here. Just your typical core Android settings. Now they have a different setup here for their settings. You go into car media set. Here you can turn on your loudness, your key pant, your key tone, your uh, amplifier, and then they have another list of settings here. Your any key boot, handbrake, auto navigation, OSD time, rear view mirror on and off. You can turn off the mute when your car is in the rear view camera. I do have a, my car switches the rear view camera, but I also have a toggle switch for it as well with the different setting lines on there. So that way it doesn't mute the music anymore. Your panel light, you can have it on all the time or you can turn it off, time control. Now, this also dims too, which is very nice because a lot of the other ones did not dim when you turn your headlights on. You can set a default volume. You can actually set your mix scale on here. Steer setting is your steering wheel controls. That's a little different than the other ones used to be. They've changed quite a bit and it's a little funky to get to work. I really had a hard time figuring out how to do this. You basically have to hold down the key on the screen first and as you're holding it down then press the steering wheel key and then release both of them and then it goes through and sets now i'm kind of disappointed that they removed the uh, home screen and the back arrow because i actually liked having that for my steering wheel keys i hit the back arrow all the time so now i have to either hit the back arrow on the side panel or the one up in the upper corner but that's okay i mean you got your typical volume up down mute answer phone call and so on so that's your steer setting set your default navigation copy your maps and that's in this so now you go in your advanced settings here password is three three six eight so here's the dormancy i was talking about so i have it turned on you can shut that off so when you turn your car off every time you turn off the radio will fully shut down and then you have to go through the cold boot this radio takes about 18 seconds to cold boot which is not bad but I kind of like having it on all the time. I have not, I have a voltmeter built into this car. I can check any time with the car off. And after a couple days of it on, I have not even seen it drop, even a tenth of a volt. It's barely pulling anything. So why not leave it on? Uh, let's see what else here. Scrolling up. Your car mark is actually your boot up logo. I actually couldn't find that at the beginning. And it's kind of disappointing that they actually removed Pontiac. They always had Pontiac on here, but they have all the other major manufacturers on there for your car mark. I just used the standard Android boot up. Scrolling up, your volume balance. All right. 
upgrade the uh, thing. Touch screen study. Now, touch screen key study. This is new too, which is pretty cool. You can change all the buttons on the side to make them what you want. So if you don't want power to be power, you can have that be mode or phone. You know, you can change your your volume up to reverse camera. I mean, you could do whatever you want or turn your dimmer on if you don't use these, if you're using your steering wheel controls for volume. So it's kind of cool that you can actually change the six buttons off to the side here with anything that you want to. Okay, that was the touchscreen study. And then also there's two different launcher types. I'll show you the other launcher here. Let's go to number two, which I think this is the reason why I can't install an aftermarket launcher is because it has this special home screen one set up here. So let me back out and go back to my new home screen here. So here's the other home screen. Everything a little bit bigger buttons. I haven't really messed with this one much. I mean, it might be kind of cool as long as you can move around stuff. It's a little different look to everything. Got your Navi and all that on there. I still would prefer to put my own on, but again, most of the time I'm not really in this screen anyway. I'm usually on, you know, the actual music screen itself. So everything on this thing works great. The sound quality, I'm telling you, I've had the top of the line NEX Pioneer receivers, Kenwood, you name it, and this thing sounds just as good. It sounds really awesome. I got good bass. They don't have a low pass filter. I do have an amp in here with two six and a half inch subs in my stock locations, and but I still got a ton of bass. I mean, I had to turn the bass down pretty good on this thing. Comes preloaded with iGo navigation, but you also have Google Maps to use on it as well. So overall, it's a fantastic radio. One last part I wanted to show is, in my opinion, the best MP3 player to use on these Android radios is Power Amp. Gives you good artwork. It's really easy to use, and you can just swipe to the side for the next track. There's actually a app out there, so you can use your next track button on your steering wheel controls to get this to work. And again, it, just the way it sorts your music, you can designate folders that you only want to play from. I mean, I have my wife's music and my music on here, so if it's just me in the car, I just turn her folder off. That way, when I'm playing random search or anything like that, it pretty much only plays my music and not hers. So, it's really cool. I recommend this radio. Again, compared to my 10-inch, this thing fits so much better. My, my controls here don't even touch it. I can actually see them. So... Very, very nice radio. I'm glad that they came out the 8 inch, and the price was only $269, and that was shipped. Free shipping on this guy. Thanks for watching.